examples here in my Java examples. First, uh, the image demo that uh, you can see running in the frame here just uh, shows uh, an image. I have uh, this kind of coffee image taken at the time when I started making coffee and uh, as you can see I put uh, the cup upside down so for a comical effect. And then showing that uh, we can also create our own images and uh, the, so the images of course can be loaded uh, from files so here is the coffee image and uh, flappy birds in here and then the images uh, you can put them in swing components like a button here like the button uh, is gonna randomly rearrange uh, the flappies here so this image demo like shows how to use images in your Java program and uh, then the next one the image op demo uh, shows uh, how to uh, transform uh, images like uh, turn to grayscale or mirror or or uh, whatever you want. So how do we achieve this that we have a window that contains uh, images load from a file and images that we drawn ourselves uh, what can we do? Let's uh, read through the code and, uh, and see how it's done. So image demo, a uh, bunch of uh, imports here and uh, there's a couple of ways to read and write an image uh, but uh, I guess this is a more modern one although for me 2005 is modern maybe there's some, something after this but uh, this image demo now again we see that uh, I'm subclassing a J panel to make this uh, working swing component and uh, then it has uh, images in it so this coffee and the flappy we're gonna be reading uh, from the files actually is done here so image io read so you just give it the file and uh, and it uh, reads from there so no this gifs jpegs pngs and probably uh, these no fancy images uh, also uh, then uh, you can load them to, and then the png this is also nice because uh, the transparency channel is uh, included so we saw that the flap is uh, the, the, what was uh, transparent outside the circle so was showing the background buffered image is a subclass of image with the additional ability to give access to the individual pixels so there's a get and a set method to change the color of a pixel and then we have a rng uh, to randomly position the flappies now the colors as they are in computing so uh, they, they are typically encoded as rgb so these days a one byte uh, for components so 256 possible values for each component to the power of three so that uh, it was about 16 million if i remember correctly so uh, that many colors uh, we can see on the screen uh, then some colors uh, we they cannot be broken down into uh, rgb so then those will never see on our screen unless the light is hitting the screen in a particular way. But uh, the color objects, uh, now because objects are pretty expensive in memory, at, uh, I, I'd say a color object, my best guess is uh, 60 to 70 bytes uh, per object. So uh, if you have a million pixel image, so 1000 by 1000 is not even very big image, uh, these days, so that's a million pixels. So if so, each one, the, each pixel theoretically could have a different color. So we'd need to have a, that many of those color objects. So of course, that's not the, what we're gonna be doing. So uh, the color objects, uh, the, the utility methods in color, they uh, have this uh, back uh, the uh, RGB color into a four byte in. Then the fourth byte is then the uh, transparency value that uh, the Java uh, libraries also respect and use. So convert to RGB. So uh, here as a as a demonstration method that if you have the RG and B as the individual bytes. So here we we cannot use byte here. How come? Because uh, bytes are signed. So the, the, the we need an unsigned byte here. So then uh, we just uh, deal with, deal with an int. So. Uh, this very strange looking, uh, this bitwise arithmetic uh, looks like a line noise, but uh, uh, so what is this for? So this for, uh, so zero x, so this is now a base 16, so hexadecimal number, uh, so a single byte can be always be given as a two hexadecimal digits. Uh, you might need uh, one, two or three base uh, 10 digits, but uh, so hexadecimal, so it's more nice and and consistent. So uh, the purpose here, so bitwise arithmetic, uh, so you can read somewhere or from my extra uh, lecture notes. 
that the bitwise and so in the result the bits that are on in both so this here is a mask uh, bits are on in the lowest byte and off everywhere else so this uh, cutting stenciling out whatever you wanna call it the lowest byte of the number that we then shift the 16 bits to the left to move it into the third byte and bitwise or now to combining this the same thing for the green value and uh, bit shift it uh, one byte to the left and then the blue is uh, left in the lowest uh, byte so uh, we can just uh, accept this now as a given so you can decipher what is going on in here what is going on here my handbrake uh, just uh, gave me an announcement that uh, okay I can put down the cocktail now. Um, <clears throat> So uh, we already saw we can read an image uh, from a file. Now the image uh, transformations that's gonna be in the next example but uh, so one transformation is built in the image class. Get scaled instance notice you don't give a scaling factor but you give the actual intended size and uh, then this third option constant parameter uh, determines uh, which particular algorithm is used. So the, the scaling, if you think about it, so so scaling, uh, if uh, the scale is the uh, exact integer multiple, so seems straightforward. But uh, what if, if it's not so? Then uh, so uh, this uh, third parameter determines that uh, for each uh, pixel of the target image, so uh, what the uh, pixels in the source image affect and how. So uh, then, because remember, pixels are not really points, but they're areas. So uh, the area uh, in a target uh, image, so it can come from multiple pixels from the original. So then uh, this uh, produces, uh, you, this avoids the aliasing artifacts that we get uh, when uh, each pixel reads of the target uh, reads from a value from exactly one pixel of the source. So we create a couple, so uh, there's coffee, so I think it's uh, too big to, so uh, reasonable. So these days, I guess this is a, uh, like a thumbnail, I remember this used to be like a full screen, uh, but uh, so that's uh, like kids don't even know. But uh, so then uh, the buffered image, so that one's uh, the subclass that uh, allows the pixel access, so there is the set RGB and get the RGB for the pixel coordinates, so uh, here we do some uh, uh, modular arithmetic uh, to produce the uh, color gradients uh, based on the coordinates uh, x and y. Uh, the color gradient, uh, so to, to, uh, to uh, the direction vector as in with any implicit uh, surface, so then you can adjust it uh, with the multiplier. So otherwise one one, so, so uh, then, uh, uh, then the gradients gonna, uh, gonna be normal to that. Um, so one minus one, okay. Now, uh, how do you draw? Now, you already saw how to draw into a swing component. So, do you have to learn a whole another drawing mechanism? Thank goodness, no. So, here is uh, again a power of object oriented design that the graphics 2D when you have it. So, you don't know and you don't care what it happens to be connected to. So, previously, graphics 2D was connected to the surface of a swing component, so uh, what you draw appears in there, but uh, from any image, so you can get a graphics object, and then we downcast to graphics 2D, same reason as in the paint component method, so now we have a graphics 2D that draws into an image, so now we can again draw whatever we want. Now images, so uh, they can be uh, drawn, so uh, the graphics has a draw image, now this uh, kind of thing as a teachable moment that uh, the, the parameter type should never appear in the name of the method. So this should be draw and then uh, the fact that the parameter is an image uh, so then means that uh, that's what we're doing. But uh, so the method is draw image. So which image and uh, what is the top left corner where you want to draw it. And uh, then image observer just in case uh, uh, all a couple of decades ago from a phone line internet connection so maybe the image has been fully downloaded so then what so image observer decides every AWT component is an image observer the floor wax and a desert topping at the same time kind of so then we can just use the component itself as the observer what uh, the swing components I think do by default is uh, 
uh, they just uh, draw whatever they can and then just uh, repaint themselves uh, when there is uh, more arriving. And again, so PNG, there is the transparency channel and uh, then that's the alpha channel, the fourth byte of the color. And uh, this, uh, this graphics uh, mechanism respects uh, and, uh, and follows uh, the transparencies. So uh, this uh, is showing how to create and use images, but uh, let's move on to the next uh, example, the image ops demo here, uh, showcasing. So let's go to the documentation. So image filter is part of a pipeline, very similar to the computation pipelines that, that we'll see at the, at the end of the course. So image filter, so is actually now, so what is going on here is that the images uh, know how to produce themselves. So we, we basically you can ask an image like, uh, give me what you got. But uh, then uh, you can have an image producer that is not image itself, but something that produces images. And then uh, image uh, consumers, uh, then uh, they take stuff from the, uh, so image producer produces stuff and uh, by calling this method, so tells the consumer what's coming. And uh, the special type of consumer that we're gonna be using in our examples, this is pretty straightforward once you see. So image filter, so it's a consumer that uh, takes an image and performs some kind of transformation and then produces, uh, pro uh, it's not a producer itself, but uh, it is just a thing. Uh, yeah, I think the other thing uh, that we wrap around it is gonna be the producer to the next uh, step of the pipeline, I think. But so the image filter, so this uh, takes an image, performs some kind of conversion. So uh, this is now example of what is called the template method design pattern. So by overriding some methods in here, so then we can create custom behavior. So in the super class, all the methods have a reasonable default behavior that when applied, so called the null filter has no effect on the data passing through filter should subclass and overwrite the methods. And then we, instead of directly or, uh, subclassing filter, we're gonna be subclassing like a suitable subclass that already has uh, stuff for us. So, so uh, this image transformations, this is fun and interesting, I think so. So let's uh, take a look. So reading to the image ops demo, so first uh, to show how to make a color transformation where the color of a pixel depends on its original color and then also on the position, but not in the neighborhood. So if you want the whole neighborhood, so then you're gonna need a different uh, kind of filter. So uh, we're gonna do a scramble. So uh, then we're gonna be scrambling red, green and blue components uh, depending on the uh, on uh, the coordinates. So uh, the we make a local class scramble and uh, then uh, extending RGB image filter so that we don't need to reinvent the wheel. So the only thing we need to reinvent, so let's put the over right there for, for clarification, that uh, filter RGB. So if in pixel XY we see this color, so RGB packed into an in. So for efficiency, this never use color objects because they're too expensive in time and space. So the, everything is done by colors packed uh, into the ins. So then extracting the values again, so with the bit shifts, and uh, then so depending on the uh, remainder of x and y, but now so uh, uh, if you divide by integer division, so then uh, uh, this behave this effectively behaves as a scaled version. So then uh, each uh, box of x s y s uh, is handled the same way. So we, how we scramble depends on the on the parity of uh, x and uh, y. And uh, then uh, take the a, r and g and, uh, and return. No, notice again the color is returned as an int. So, so we need this formula uh, to back, uh, back things into an int. So, so that's the filter. So we're handily made as a local class here because we need it only in one method. If we use them in multiple methods, so then it could be a nested class. And uh, the magic lines and uh, uh, actually, what well, I think I should, uh, instead of copy pasting these to every method, so I tell everybody not to do that. So left as an exercise for a reader, better object oriented design without duplication. So you just make a filter and then the image, tell it, uh, okay, uh, produce yourself. So I turn it into a filtered image source. So the image, the producer and the filter that we apply and then here deep in the heart of Texas in the AWT, so 
toolkit, uh, create image, so the producer, so the producer, yeah, yeah, the filter image source is the producer uh, part of the pipeline. So theoretically we could make a pipeline arbitrary long, so here is just the one step. So, uh, so this is the magic create an image and uh, we return the image. So we don't need to, uh, so even though, so the filter talks about x, y, but uh, then uh, this doesn't need to be a buffered image because we're not uh, directly accessing the code. So as long as it's some kind of image we don't know and we don't care. Let's go bumper sticker again. Is this a buffered image or volatile image or whatever image? So, so if you care you're doing it from. Okay, same principle, but now with a different uh, filter for transformation. So then uh, the, the transformation, so the affine transforms uh, scale, rotate and translate and any combinations thereof are special because uh, they're invertible uh, and can be done with the matrix multiplications and matrix multiplications. Uh, so uh, if you take a linear algebra, you know that the then uh, the result, result is the, so any sequence of affine transformations is one matrix multiplication. So they're so efficient that uh, these are all over computer graphics. So you so you'll always find, wherever there's computer graphics or geometry, you will find uh, the, the affine transforms. So affine transforms has a handy bunch of uh, uh, utility methods uh, to create uh, often needed. Uh, uh, transformations like a rotation uh, around the point. If no point, it's the origin, but uh, that's the corner of the image. We don't want that. So we want uh, the width uh, and the, the average, the, the center point, and the rotation angle is in radians. So there is two pi radians, 360 degrees. So uh, therefore, uh, one half of a pi is uh, one quarter, and uh, so how many uh, quarters? Uh, so then uh, steps times. Uh, that much. Now there's a utility method uh, for this common quadrant rotation also, but um, so that, that's how you, if you rotate it 45 degrees, unfortunately your image is still on axis aligned uh, rectangle, so things are gonna be go off the edges. Now to do a different, and uh, now we don't do a uh, do, do a filtered uh, we do, but uh, we, we don't we uh, do a do, 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 do a buffered image op so uh, we can uh, take this affine transform existing as a platonic uh, thing uh, doesn't even know about uh, Java or anything. So then uh, turn it into an op that we can apply into an image. And uh, so it could be like a scaling or, a, or a something weird. And uh, then we make an image filter now. Uh, that's a, a buffered image uh, filter of uh, this uh, transformation. And uh, the rest of the lines basically the same except that for some reason I have here a media tracker waiting for the image. Maybe I need it. I should look at that. This is a really old timey way to do it. So uh, wait for the images being fully downloaded before you start uh, playing with them. Well, well that's a good uh, teachable moment anyway. Uh, next one. Now this is the, the best and the finest. The image uh, convolution. So uh, this is now the entire neighborhood, not just uh, the individual pixel. How big a neighborhood? So uh, the, the convolution has a concept of a kernel. So let's actually go to the Wikipedia page and uh, much easier for me to explain there. Acting a bit slow, so there we go. Mm -hmm. Safari always likes to think about before it uh, loads the page. But uh, well, I guess Chrome gives an OSNAP. Uh, Safari's never given me an OSNAP yet, so I like it better. Okay, here we go. Well, the convolution with the kernel, this is this is really amazing. That uh, basic, so the kernel is like a mask, that the pixel uh, is in the center, that is being processed, like the mask is uh, moving across the image one pixel at a time. So every pixel, uh, like logically the pixels are processed simultaneously, so that uh, when the mask moves right, so then it uh, still uses the old value of the pixel, not uh, the new one. So uh, the mask is basically the weights, you, uh, the convolution is the weighted uh, sum of uh, of uh, the pixels and the neighborhood. So identity, so zero weight to all the neighbors. And uh, then uh, one, so of course you get the original image, 
but uh, like uh, doing a different kinds of kernels so where uh, you get the end result we can do like a blur and the edge detection and sharpen and uh, so like there, there's a whole kinds of things uh, with this one operation this convolution is like a really nice then, then even nicer is a deconvolution that one is sent in java like uh, and i don't think i, I don't think even numpy and scipy have it uh, but uh, wolfram has it and and that one's uh, uh, so deconvolutions applied to images uh, uh, you, uh, I don't know why people don't use them all the time because that's where the, where the magic happens. But uh, this is already pretty nice. So then uh, the convolution with the given kernel, let's see how it's uh, done in the image of demo. So uh, R here the parameter, so uh, how many to the left and right. So the actual size of the kernel is, is now 2R plus 1. Like uh, so if R1 so initially becomes 3 and 2 becomes 5 and and, and so on. We, uh, the kernel is a float array, 32-bit 30, uh, precision is, uh, is quite enough. And uh, now that we do for simplicity the block box blur, so uh, then uh, every single value is just one over the kernel size. So it's a totally, uh, uh, the every, uh, uh, every pixel becomes the average of the pixels uh, in, inside the box kernel. So when uh, you just create the kernel, notice the kernel is 2D, but we create it as a 1D array. Uh, so it's the row major order, so the first row followed by the second row, so on. So the kernel is smart enough, you give it the array, and then so how much, uh, so uh, R rows and uh, that many columns. The, co the kernel usually is a square, but uh, doesn't have to be. So then you just make a convo, turn the kernel into a convo operation and uh, may turn it into a filter, and uh, the rest is uh, exactly the same as before. So uh, with this, uh, so now we could uh, uh, create a pretty uh, fancy image uh, processing pipelines.